Hello there, I'm Black Bright, um, broadcasting out the UK, and welcome to my channel. For those of you who know Joseph with the coat of many colours, I am the vlogger with the hair of many colours. I change my hair like I change my underwear. So, um, yes, I wanted to talk about this new book. Well, it's not a new book. It came out in 2008 by Sylvia Brown. It was called The End of Days, and it's been going around the front cover and a uh, a page that's been outlined in red and she wrote it yes in 2008 she died in 2013 so nobody can ask her about the source of the information but in 2008 when this book was published this is what she wrote and I'll tell you the reason why I'm raising this in a minute um According to Sylvia Brown's book, End of Days, Predictions and Prophecies about the End of the World, she predicted that in 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking lungs and bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will vanish as quickly as it arrived, attacking again 10 years later, i.e. in 2030, and then disappearing completely. Now, what's ironic is that this morning, I actually got an audio, and the audio was talking about, um, this man was saying that he got a message from God, and that God told him, apparently he's been saying this for years about this virus coming round about now, and that we shouldn't worry about the virus itself, but we should be concerned about the vaccination because he also said that it would disappear very quickly. But the he, what he added was that the government will not be telling us that it's disappeared or that it's stopped or that we're OK because they'll want to promote the vaccine. And because we do not know what's in the vaccine, we should be very careful. So the, what, on, the good, on the good point, the good point is if it's true that it's going to disappear as quickly as it came, then we don't need to panic, none of this panic buying and, you know, going crazy and, you know, buying all this food for goodness knows well, for goodness knows when. But on the bad side, it is to know how we protect ourselves, whether or not it's a conspiracy theory about the vaccinations and what we, um, how we protect ourselves as best as possible. Like I'm always saying, you build up the immune system, plenty of nutrition, rest, sleep, and all that kind of stuff, and exercise. Now, this book was published in 2008. Um, the page that you're interested in is 3012. Now, it looks like it's got two covers. I'm not quite sure why. Two front sleeves. And it's the same book. They're both on Amazon. So, um, and I checked with Snopes which is a fact check to see whether or not this book that has been going out, this couple of book was authentic, and it is. Um, they kind of, I'm going to put the link below, they kind of, even though they said this is what she predicted, then they came up with some other stuff that kind of counteracts it, but I'm not quite sure about that. So, um, like I said, the Snopes fact check published on the 4th of March 2020 states that what she described in her book that a respiratory illness would spread across the globe in 2020 is true. Sylvia Brown died in 2013, so we know that the media can't investigate or examine her sources. And could you imagine she'd be under the spotlight right now? Uh, based on that prophecy, we can... We could claim that pharmaceutical companies could have planned the outbreak to synchronise with that prophecy. I mean, sometimes people write about these things and it gives people ideas. I'm not saying that that's what's happened, but it's a possibility because remember, pharmaceutical companies, they're the ones who benefit from this virus. No one else. It's the pharmaceutical companies that come up with all the um, remedies and the solutions and their experiments and also they are actually offering individuals £3,000 to act as guinea pigs to take the vaccine if you don't believe me oh, people are sending me stuff left right and centre anyway look at this this coronavirus continues to spread across the globe a junior British health minister has been diagnosed with COVID-19 Meanwhile, scientists from a London lab propose to infect volunteers. 
volunteers oh. with money in the world's first such test on humans. We can announce that we have commenced the development of the world's first commercial human coronavirus challenge study model, also known as controlled human infection model. We are pleased to be able to try and assist in the battle against COVID-19. The study will infect 24 people with two strains of coronavirus similar to COVID-19, but causing milder symptoms as scientists try to develop a vaccine against the outbreak. The volunteers will be paid up to three and a half thousand pounds. Only visits from doctors will break their two weeks of isolation. We asked people around London if they would agree to be infected. Uh, make it four. No, I can't. If I was younger, maybe, but I'm one of those sort of dodgy ones that are going to kick the bucket soon, so, you know. Well, I say I haven't worked for a month, so I really need some money. <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't know. 10,000. I've, I've got too much going on to, to, like, quarantine myself. I mean, I won't die from it. I hope. No, I'm not even entirely convinced that the uh, statistics behind it is true anyway, so... Oh, why not? Uh, and if I get infected twice, do I get twice as much? At the age of 71, no. <laughs> no, because I have underlying health conditions. Why would I do that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. So... So they're looking for people to experiment on, but we know the vaccine is already ready. So, I mean, this is just... I don't want to say a smoke screen, but it could be a smoke screen to make them people feel more comfortable about taking the vaccine if they know that it's being tested and so they're giving people £3,000 to have it done and then people are more likely to say, oh, well, it has been tested on humans, therefore it's okay for us to take. Some people, they take the flu shot and are absolutely fine and this might come, this might be like the flu shot for the majority of people. And I'm not saying you should take it or you shouldn't take it. I'm just saying that we're not convinced what's in it and what is the outcome. So um, what else have I got to say to you? Um, I think in a TEDx seminar in 2016, Bill, Bill Gates um, predicted the virus. And now he's got shares in the pharmaceutical industry. So um, that's quite a bit unnerving. And um, what else is there? Yeah, all I was saying, if the virus disappears and we're not told, and we're still having this kind of frenzied behaviour, I mean, that's not good. I need to show you a video of a lady because... Um, when you think about our behaviour as healthy adults and assuming that we are all sensible and we are going into these shops and we are just taking as much as we can because it's all about me, me, me. I need this. Supposing, you know, the shop's closed down, I need money for my food, and they don't need anything for the vulnerable and the elderly and the disabled. <coughs> oh, my goodness, the coronavirus. Anyway, you don't have, you, you kind of, you're not thinking ahead. I mean, yesterday I picked up a few tins of milk, and there was a lady beside me, and she looked at me so beseechingly, and I said, oh, did you, because the one I was, the last, I was taking up the last one, to be honest, and I picked up about five, and I looked at her, and I said to her, you know, did you want one? She goes, well, actually, I needed two. So I gave her two. I still had three. But the fact of the matter is, is that people are not being considerate. People are just taking and taking. Apparently, all the painkillers have gone, even though they are um, reducing it to two per person. They'll just keep going back. They send their brothers, they send their sisters, they send everybody in. To, and to, so, they, so they're stockpiling. So even though technically they're, they're restricting it to a few people, um, a, two items to a person, that person can go and come back about 10 times. They've probably got all day, the whole day to waste. So there's people like this lady mentions. So I, you, if you... 
if you don't like profanities, you need to switch off. This is only a minute long, but I think it's important that I actually show it to you. Hello, all you lovely lot out there. Now, what a bad state of affairs we're in. I can't believe what's fucking happening. Now, anyone going out now can't get a mask. Of course you can't, because all the greedy fuckers doubled up on them. So if I go out, which I won't, I've got to go out like that. Now, we see a picture on the internet last night of an elderly lady facing empty shelves. She could not buy a fucking thing. Now, give a thought to the elderly and all those that can't get out. I come from a war and don't remember anything like this. Stuff was rationed, but we all got our share. Now, everybody's going mad buying all the fucking toilet rolls up. Why? Don't you normally buy them? The stores should be letting people only have one per customer. No, but the stores are greedy bastards, and they're not. Now, all start crying within the next week or so when the toilet prices fucking double. Well, we'll see about that. You'll all be using newspaper like we did in the war. Bless her little heart. <clears throat> but she's talking sense, and, you know, the reason why I say that is I hope you can actually see what's happening in this video. <clears throat> I'm not going to make a habit of um, <clears throat> switching between videos, but anyway, hold on one sec. It goes quiet. There's no sound at the beginning, but hopefully you can see this. There's so much reflection. I don't know why. Let's turn off the light. Hold on. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, that's worse, isn't it? Oh, that's worse. Anyway, they haven't opened the door. They're going to open the door in a minute. People are being sampled. Now, can you imagine the elderly trying to go and do their shopping when that is the mania that is going on? I mean, that is what it's like. I don't even know where that is. For some reason, I think London is worse than anywhere else because where I live, we, they, you know, we haven't got all of that. Yes, we've got some shops where there's no toilet rolls, but they're the main, like, Tesco and Sainsbury's. But, you know, you've still got your, like, your pound shops, your bargain shops. They're all doing toilet rolls. They, they, they're fully stocked of everything. So I don't know what quite's happening, and people are not being considerate. And when they're all rushing in like that, they're not thinking about people who are on the floor or who've fallen over, not, are you okay? Can I help you? You know, everybody stand back. Just wait a minute, somebody's falling over. There's no feeling. It's like all their feelings have gone. It's like they become robots, machines. This fight or flight, this, this kind of um, instinct that tells them we've got to, it's almost like they'll kill to get what they want. And it's all, it's all in their mind because they're not lacking. I'm sure the majority of those people who are going into those shops and buying surplus amounts are not lacking. They can't be lacking because they've got the bloody money to buy that stuff. Unless they're buying it on credit cards. I think it's really quite sad, actually. But going back to this. We've got to take care of the elderly. We've got to think about them, make sure that they've got their bare essentials in their home. Don't let pictures like that, videos like that, 
make you think that there is a shortage of supply. There isn't. And also, if what Sylvia Brown predicts that it is going to go as soon as it came, and like this other guy that um, I listened to, um, the only reason I don't want to show this, um, I don't want to air it is because he was talking too much about God and, you know, I'm not sure if I can um, promote that. But that's the only reason and it was going on for quite long. But he reckons that it ends at the end of March and we will not be told. So if you can just try and hold on and just not panic and believe that you have enough, you have more than enough, you know, then other people are not going to be deprived. The people who really need it are not going to be deprived. Um, what else is there? Um, I think I have said most of the stuff. Like I said, just build up your immune system and basic hygiene. Um, if you think it's another flu shot, you can take your chances. I'm not telling you to do or not to do. Um, but yeah, also remember that when you're going to go into these crowded supermarkets to get your bulk buy-in, you're mixing with all the people who probably got coronavirus, so you're defeating the object. So just be careful, be sensible, be patient, and don't panic. That's all. Bye-bye.